A UN-sponsored Khmer Rouge tribunal in Cambodia is currently trying two surviving Khmer Rouge leaders, Kusum Pon and Nun Chia. Since its inception 12 years ago, the court has sentenced one mid-level Khmer Rouge leader to life in jail. The court has been criticized for dragging so long, but a former judge at the tribunal share a different view. Mr. Marshal Lemong, former co-international investigating judge at the tribunal, sat down for an interview with me last month in Paris, France. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Lemong. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to give you a, an interview. Today, the mayor of Paris just inaugurated honor the victims of the Khmer Rouge by uh, inaugurating this memorial uh, in the public park, Park de uh, So how can this kind of act help to uh, find justice for the victim and heal the wound of the, the victim's family? Well, it's an important day because uh, uh, I think the work of memory is very important as regards what happened in Cambodia 30, 40 three years ago. And uh, it's very uh, interesting to notice that uh, 43 years ago, uh, the Khmer Rouge entered Phnom Penh and uh, were in power for three years, eight months, and 20 days. And uh, 20 years ago, uh, in April 98, Pol Pot died without being tried. And, uh, I was very uh, surprised to see that, to read in the newspapers last week, that, that uh, people are still considering Pol Pot as a hero. Some people in An Long Beng, in his... Uh, the former Khmer Rouge stronghold. Yes. Uh, they, they still considered him as a national hero. And this is precisely the illustration of the necessity of a trial in order to uh, explain who did what and what happened precisely and who the victims are and who the, the guilty people are. So you were a judge uh, at the Khmer Rouge Tribunal in the, first uh, in the beginning uh, as well, you know. Uh, so talking about the trial justice, is the court doing the right thing in uh, bringing about all this, what you just talked about? Well, it's... Uh, difficult not to be nuanced because uh, there are uh, obviously some aspects that are not satisfactory in the functioning of the court. But uh, the, the simple fact that the trial has been organized is by itself a huge victory. Because uh, I remind you that uh, in 2002, when the uh, negotiation between the United Nations and the government of Cambodia uh, were interrupted in 2002 because there was uh, the impossibility of, of agreeing on, on the format of the tribunal. And nobody at that time, nobody would have thought that uh, the trial would ever take place. And the simple fact that it could be organized is by itself a success. Now, it could probably have been a, a better trial, but, but I think that uh, there, there's been several aspects uh, that show the uh, uh, importance of the trial. First, the situation has been clarified as regards the responsibility of individuals accused. And the victims have been identified as victims and the guilty people, again, has been identified as such. But that's not the only impact. There are several uh, side uh, effects that are important. For example, the uh, debate organized in Cambodian society about the Khmer Rouge period has been initiated by the, by the trial. Before the trial, this question was taboo. Nobody talked about it in the families. It was too painful for the elderly people and it was not interesting for the young people. And now, this has begun to change. The curriculum in the school has been changed and it is now possible to study the Khmer Rouge period. Whereas before 2008, it was completely silent on this so, issue. 
what about this intervention uh, from uh, the Cambodian government? Quite often, Prime Minister Hun Sen voices objection to this and that, and also some uh, scholar, some researcher, are not very happy with the way uh, the trial dragged on and on for so long, and also a small amount of people uh, are put on trial, and these are old people. Well, I think it's uh, very easy to criticize the tribunal. It's, uh, it's, uh, I wouldn't uh, uh, suggest that uh, this trial was perfect. So it's very easy. But uh, what I would insist on is that uh, the condition for this trial to be useful was to organize it in Cambodia. It would have been much easier to organize it in The Hague or in another foreign country with international judges only. But uh, a, a foreign trial organized with foreigners applying a foreign law would have made no sense for Cambodian people. And the condition for it to be useful was to organize it in Cambodia with the participation of Cambodians. And of course, this is more difficult because we know the situation in Cambodia. It's not an advanced democracy. It's, a, it's more difficult to organize an independent trial with a an independent and impartial tribunal in Cambodia than in uh, Sweden or in the uh, in Netherlands. But, but again, if you consider the impact on the population, it's very important to take place in, in Cambodia. And uh, uh, an example, 100,000 people attended the uh, hearings in the court altogether. And this never happened in other tribunals, in other international courts. And uh, some villages in Ratanakiri or Mondolkiri where uh, meetings were organized in these villages with uh, people watching the hearings on TV, on television with uh, battery, car batteries. And this never happened elsewhere. So this is a very important impact. Of course, there's been some difficulties with the government. We know that. And uh, the, con the, the, the answer is, would it, would it have been better to organize no trial at all? Nobody would think that. Would it be better to organize it abroad? Nobody thinks that. So we have to accept also the disadvantages. So you think this tribunal is going to go beyond uh, K002 and uh, you know, to uh, indict and uh, trial more? Uh, I think there are two, two issues. First, I think it's very difficult to uh, discuss the, the, the utility of, of uh, this uh, case three and four without thinking of the feasibility of, 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 the, of the trials. I think the Cambodian side doesn't want this, uh, these uh, further trials. And uh, uh, from the moment when the, the one side of the tribunal doesn't want the, the process to, to go on, it becomes very difficult to organize a trial uh, for the other side. And I'm very skeptical from the beginning on the feasibility of this. And the second thing is that uh, when we organize some uh, further prosecution, we have to be careful about the uh, uh, reasons why people are, are prosecuted or not. It's very easy to identify the reasons why the uh, former leaders of the regime and Doik, the uh, head of S21, were prosecuted. They have a very uh, specific profile, which make them be in a very specific situation. So it's easy to, to explain why these people are, are prosecuted. It becomes much more difficult to explain why five more Could people or 10 more people are prosecuted. Because why not 20? Why not 50? And then there is an issue because uh, how can the prosecutor explain the rationale for organizing more prosecution? Have to be careful about a clear criteria to uh, launch the new procedure. Can you, do you mind share with me a little bit uh, your experience in uh, working with your national counterpart when you were uh, a judge in uh, the Khmer Rouge Tribunal? It was excellent. It was, there, there are two aspects. There is the legal aspect, 
judicial aspect, and there is the personal aspect. The legal aspect sometimes was difficult. We know that um, it has been public, there has been some disagreement, there's been some difficulties sometimes. But never ever it has become a personal issue. And we're good friends. When I go back to Cambodia, I always meet him. And, and we had a very good relationship uh, from two, two people uh, working together with pleasure. So it was very important for the, for the success of the proceedings that uh, these uh, uh, political or judicial difficulties doesn't become personal difficulties, and it never did. So what do you foresee the post-ECC uh, uh, for the Cambodian community? What, what else should do to heal the community from this trauma? Well, I think it's very important to have a first uh, public access to the case file. It's very important that uh, any uh, person interested in the Khmer Rouge period can access all the uh, case file uh, that is uh, uh, kept in archives. This is the first thing. And uh, the second thing is that the, the tribunal has accepted some form of reparations for the civil parties that are very interested for the, the involvement of uh, all Cambodian society. For example, the creation of a peace learning center, the possibility to organize exhibitions and organize debates about the Khmer Rouge period are very interesting and can be used for uh, the uh, uh, study of the period and the uh, teaching of younger generation. So, for example, like uh, the event in Paris today, uh, it's basically initiated by uh, the community here without any intervention from the court. So should this be count as kind of reparation for the victims? I'm, I'm not sure it's without any relation with the court because uh, the people who organized this meeting are, were civil parties in, in, in the court and, and they are very interested in the functioning of the court and, and uh, the proceedings uh, in, in uh, process. So uh, I think it's, it's part of the, of the job also, it's the, the continuation of the judicial work by other means. So, um, what about uh, international uh, law and practice? How can this uh, tribunal contribute to the, the international practice of law? In what way? Well, there is a, a specificity in this tribunal is that uh, uh, it was supposed to apply a different procedural system. Cambodian procedural system, which is uh, directly inspired by the French law. And this is very different from other international courts. Unfortunately, the people who were recruited, were, uh, the majority of people recruited by the United Nations were from common law countries, were from Anglo-Saxon countries, or from other international tribunals, and they had their own habits, and they didn't want to change them. So the, the system couldn't be completely applied. And this was a problem because, uh, the, uh, in, in fact, the, the result was sometimes that we, we could have the impression that the, uh, the, uh, both systems, uh, drawbacks were uh, added, added and, and, and uh, we had the, uh, all the disadvantages of the civil law system and all the disadvantages of the common law system. So I would personally be uh, in favor of a new experience. If there is another tribunal, I would try to organize it completely with the logic of the, the French system, which is, in my view, more uh, efficient than the common law system. So do you also foresee that, uh, because we talk, you talked earlier about um, there could be argument on numbers of people who could be uh, prosecuted. But do you foresee that uh, after the big case, because many people think that this court won't go beyond uh, case 002. And in, in that case, do you foresee that the local uh, court would carry on uh, ca uh, trying more people? I don't know. I think uh, I'm a bit uh, pessimistic about the judicial solutions that can be found. 
because uh, uh, there won't be any uh, satisfactory solution now. And uh, uh, I don't know what, what would be decided. Uh, it will probably be more uh, an opportunistic uh, solution than a real uh, legal uh, reasoned uh, solution. I'm, I'm persuaded that uh, it will be very difficult to and find the, a way. Are, are the local judge uh, qualified by now to prosecute more Khmer leaders by themselves without the international support? I think it will be difficult without the international support, particularly if there are uh, political uh, interferences. Uh, because. Uh, the, the situation of the uh, Cambodian judiciary is, uh, is difficult. Nobody contests it. And, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's not a question of, of nationality, it's a question of, of situation. And, and uh, a French judge in the same situation wouldn't be better. So uh, um, I think it's very important to try and organize something clarified at the court, uh, the ECCC level. But again, I'm a bit uh, skeptical about the possibility to have it now. Thank you so much, Judge Lemong, for sharing your time with VOA. Thank you, sir. My pleasure.